On this episode of Full Bore, we're going to be showing you guys why the AU Falcon isn't as bad as it looks. Now, there was once a time where I thought I'd never own a car other than a Toyota. Um, and that's because I used to think that Toyotas were the supreme vehicle. You couldn't get anything that was better or more reliable than a Toyota. And um, you know what, I'm still right. But when it came to buying a ute that could cruise down the highway at 110 k's an hour with supreme comfort, reliability, um, good economy, um, and supreme practicality, I couldn't go past a mighty Falcon. Now this is a 2002 Series 3 AU Falcon U and it's no ordinary AU Falcon. This is my AU Falcon. Now the reason I bought this was I owned an EL Falcon back in the day, um, mostly as a bit of a meme. I didn't really want it or need it but when I drove it I realized that they're actually a pretty good car and uh, times change and you sort of need different vehicles over time and I really wanted a U. So that's why I bought this AU Series 3. Now, the thing about AU Falcons is that a lot of people tend to hate them. And there's a few reasons for that, which I'll get to later, but I tend to reckon that a lot of that hatred is a little bit unfounded because turns out the AU Falcon really isn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> To understand the love-hate phenomenon that people have with the AU Falcon, one must first understand the context in which the car was released. See, Holden and Ford have always been at each other's throats, even right back to the 60s. And as either manufacturer released a car, the other would soon follow, generally within about 12 months or so. So when the VT Commo was released in 1997, it was instantly the duck's guts. Described as achingly beautiful, the VT set the standards for an Australian car of the time. Despite engine technology straight out of the 60s and rear tyres that would wear the inner edge with two slabs of beer in the boot, the VT Commo set the bar high. This was mostly due to its well-appointed and smart-looking interior, pokey V6 and V8 engines, its road manners, and because it just looks so darn good. But in 1998, it was Ford's go. And with the VT the way it was, Aussies were expecting good things from Henry's down under division. Now, what Australia finally got was this weird, awkward and kind of dopey looking machine and that was of course the ill-fated AU. Now, the real kick in the nuts in the automotive world was the front end. Um, this particular model isn't too bad because it's a Series 3, so it's got a tiny little grill that makes the front of the car look like it's smiling with two mouths. But the original Series 1 Forte had this weird waterfall grill that looks like the inside of a whale's mouth. Now, when you compare that to the beautiful and sleek VT Commodore, you can see why people flock to them in herds and why the AU was always considered the ugly duckling. Now see, I'm lucky because of course I've got the little twin smiley front grill and it's also a ute, so the rear end doesn't look like it's melting into the ground like the sedans do. Now the main reason people hate AU Falcons always has and always will be the front end. And particularly the front end of the AU Series 1 Forte, which of course has the waterfall grille. There was a myriad of other styling ailments which attributed to the vehicle's aesthetic infamacy. First of which, of course, was the rear end, which looked like a block of cheese melting into the ground. Then there was the fact that the vehicle stood so high off the ground it looked like you could go four-wheel driving in it. And that, coupled with the cheese cutter 14-inch steel rims that came on the base model Forte, meant that the Falcon ended up looking like a weird, tippy-toed cockroach. The thing is, I look the way that I do because it's in my DNA. It's called genetics. Same as the AU couldn't have helped but look butt ugly, 
especially when you consider it comes from the same gene pool as the Ford Tourist. That's right, Ford applied its new edge styling to both the AU and the Taurus. But that said, one could say that the AU kind of pulled it off a little bit better. Now, that's kind of really where the AU Falcon's demons end, because unlike the Taurus, it wasn't an automotive piece of crap. Ford have unveiled its latest weapon in the battle against Holden. It is the all-new AU Falcon. Let's check it out. Check it out. The single best redeeming feature of the AU Falcon has to be its choice of engines. Now, in this particular vehicle, you have the 4-litre overhead cam inline 6 known as the Intec. And essentially what this was, was a progression of every Falcon engine since the original 1960 XK. And they just kept getting better and better and better until you ended up with the Intec and of course, ultimately, the Barramotor, which was just a double overhead cam version of this engine. Now these things are a really stout engine and they're known for getting really high Ks in standard form. Now they're not a powerhouse, however they're a really understressed engine and they were used in taxis for years and years and years and it has been quite often noted that these things will make over a million kilometres. Now when you think about it, the Intec, the VCT and the 5 litre Windsor are all pretty big engines for this size of car. And when you put that into perspective, the Toyota Avalon of the same period only ran a 3 litre V6. Now, there's a reason for this, and that's because the Falcon is an Australian-made car for Australian conditions. And what that means is having to drive hundreds and hundreds of Ks in one sitting. And the best way to do that is to run a big engine in an understressed state. Now what that meant is that the AU Falcon was a much more flexible vehicle in that you can drive around your city streets with ease and also chuck a payload in the back or tow a caravan with it, which is something that you probably wouldn't do with your Camry. Not only was the choice of engines in the AU Falcon absolute peach, but there was a myriad of other engineering advancements which meant the car was a slight cut above. First of which was the independent rear suspension, which was a true double wishbone. In addition, the AU brought in a really trick aluminium front crossmember which lightened up the front end of the vehicle and some say that the AU Falcon is one of the best standard handling Falcons money can buy. Now when you hop into an AU Falcon, the first thing you'll notice is the fact that there's not a straight line in all of the interior. Probably the only straight line I could actually find is the speedo needle. Um, and that's Ford's new edge styling being transposed all throughout the place. Now, you've also got these two great big vents in front of you here, which look like the rear end of a baboon. Um, and to be honest, you sort of get used to it. And it's more prolific in the Series 1 dash, which is actually different. The Series 2 and Series 3 dashes are different to the Series 1. Now, it's made of this weird... Australian plastic which is both extremely cheap looking yet fairly durable there's not a single thing in this car that's broken except for the plastic strip that runs above the glove box which seems to crack on every single AU Falcon don't know why it must be just the Sun I've been waffling on about how good the AU Falcon is well I can say a car is good all day, any day, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good car. Like, I could say a Volkswagen's a good car, um, and we know the answer to that. Well, the culmination of a vehicle's components ends up being how that vehicle drives. So, to put it into words how an AU drives, well, it's sort of like being able to drive your lounge chair. Except for you're able to put a metric crap ton of stuff in the back of said lounge chair, and then go to your local industrial estate in the middle of the night and tip it in in front of the boys. Yep, that's what an AU Falcon is like to drive. 
But to put it into more technical terms, it's a pretty easy vehicle to live with. It's easy to drive, easy to maintain, easy to fix, and easy to modify. What else could you want from a vehicle? That said, in standard form, they're not terrifically pokey. They don't handle brilliant, but they are pretty damn comfy. And that's pretty much all I want. For a long time, that's kind of what a lot of Australians wanted. But nowadays, people are more caught up with buying SUVs that are higher above the rest. They can go and hit a dirt road, but look like they can go four-wheel driving, but in most cases, they can't. I don't know. The day of the family sedan is long gone, I'll tell you that. The funny thing is, is that no matter how much anyone goes on about the AU being a good car, is that it will inevitably go down in history as being one of the worst cars Ford Australia has ever built. Now that said, there is a growing fan base of people who have overcome the fact that they look like a cockroach and accepted them because they will probably be here after the nuclear fallout, like a cockroach. Now I reckon that that is a testament to not only the AU, but Ford Australia itself in that at its lowest point it could still produce a vehicle that is considered one of the most reliable cars Australia has ever produced. And I will never admit that the AU is a perfect vehicle, it had its niggling mechanical issues such as power steering leaks and rear diff bearings, but if we're going to appreciate our fallen manufacturing industry, we must also accept the fact that we didn't make perfect vehicles. And the thing is, the AU Falcon was one of them and it was purely its aesthetics that let it down. And as the old saying goes, you can't spell Australia without AU.